Hi, Alan Stratton from Muswood Turns. In my extended family, I have a wedding coming up and I need a wedding, wedding present for the bride and groom. I like ring or jewelry holders for wedding gifts. Seems to be always popular. But this time I decided to have a little bit more fun with it than I have had in the past. So I decided this time I would make a tray that the bride can put uh, jewelry on here in the, on the bottom plus another ball container that can also hold other jewelry and a lid not a friction or tight fitting lid but one that can easily be taken off now what I like about this is that they can turn it up like this they can turn it to the side they can turn it anywhere that lid will stay on and kind of have fun of it uh, maybe kind of an eye. I don't know what you're going to think of it, but I sure had fun with it. It did require my soft jaws also. So let's go ahead and make this wedding present out of the perfect sphere process, soft jaws. Wow, what else? It's coming together. So let's turn it. I am starting with a cylinder of ash. Since the end is uneven, I need to trim it back first with a spindle gouge, then finish with a skew. My cylinder is just over 3 inches in diameter. Using the octagon method is actually easy. I will mark lines along the side of the cylinder for that. 3.05 times 0.293 for the distance from the corner of the cylinder to a corner of the invisible octagon. 3.05 times 0.414 times for the length of any side of the octagon. The diameter is also the overall length of the cylinder containing the octagon. This time, I will start with the spindle end of the cylinder. There is too much wood to waste away. Instead, I am using a parting tool to preserve some wood for a later project. However, doing double duty, I am parting down to a tenon whose diameter is also the length of the octagon side. This will guide me later to cut a diagonal side. For the opposite end, I'm marking the side of the octagon as a diameter, then proceed to cut the diagonal side from the corresponding marks on the side to the tenon on the spindle side and the diameter mark on the live center side. With the basic octagon cut, I reduce the tenons on each end to no more than half what they were. Then immediately divide each visible side in half and then half again. On the ends, half was the axis. Half again is where I cut the tenon to in the second cut. But why wait? I grab my skew to cut all the corners, then to a rough rounded sphere. With all the rough work done, I cut back the tenons to a point where I can break them off, but away from the surface of the sphere. I am about where a spear jig would stop, minus the typical mounting end tenon of the jig. Now with cup face plates on both center and live center, I can refine the sphere with a shear cut starting with my bowl gouge, then skew. I have some problem areas to remove, but actually no problem. I just keep going. Then rotate the sphere 90 degrees to put the former poles to where the old equator was. This puts the ends, which have become somewhat footballish, into the cutting zone. Then rotate again to trim the ends a bit more. Fortunately, this is good enough that I do not have to do more rotations and can move on to sanding.
I will start sanding with 80 grit and with a sanding media of beeswax and mineral oil. Three 90 degree rotations with each grit refines the sphere to perfect. I never start with a grit higher than 80. I need 80 to quickly move, remove any remaining high spots. With the sphere's exterior completed, I need to hollow it for jewelry. But first, I need to adapt my newly revised soft jaws. I hollowed the jaws just enough to hold the sphere securely. Then remove some center wood by drilling in two stages. Now some small carbide tools to hollow. I stop multiple times to assess progress against the wall thickness. The soft jaws are doing their job great. Now for the dish tray. This is Paduk with double stick tape holding it to a faceplate. With this mount I can round off the perimeter. Then measure for a mounting mortise and proceed to cut it to fit my long nose jaws. Then cut an OG shape for the space between the mortise and the edge. Then sand and finish this side which is now definitely the bottom side. With the bottom tray now mounted to the long nose jaws, I can tackle the top side. However, this is not a typical dish. I do not want jewelry to move to the center. Instead, it needs to naturally move to near the rim. The center will be a pedestal to hold the hollow sphere for more jewelry. I remove most of the wood with my bowl gouge, then finish up with a round nose scraper. Then sand and finish the tray portion. One final piece. This is another piece of paduk, again mounted with double stick tape to another faceplate. This will be a loose fitting lid. This is spindle gouge turf. Then measure for the opening in the hollow sphere and fit the end. I sand and finish this side now while I can. I finally flip it around again and shape the top side. I hope the couple likes this jewelry tray design. It is unique. Adjust the sphere position for a change in perspective.
Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends about my videos. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week, I add a new wood turning video to my website. Always, please wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. A face shield saved my life, and if you use yours, we can see you again next week.